AT&T took one step closer to becoming a telecom media giant after a judge ruled on Tuesday that its $85.4 billion takeover of Time Warner can proceed. The decision was no less momentous for President Trump's Justice Department which, in suing to block the deal, was advocating a new approach to antitrust regulation. Here's a primer on what happened. This story is being updated. Read our coverage of the ruling here. AT&T, which most Americans know as a mobile phone service provider, is trying to buy Time Warner, owner of big media brands including HBO, Warner Brothers and CNN. The takeover was announced in October 2016, and is the latest effort by a big telecom or cable company to acquire media assets. The cable company Comcast owns NBC Universal, and Verizon owns websites including Yahoo and HuffPost. The Justice Department sued or blocked the deal last year, arguing that it would limit competition and raise costs. The companies countered that the deal would allow Time Warner and AT&T to compete more effectively against Silicon Valley companies like Google and Netflix. Read more, Dealmakers Brace for the AT&T Time Warner ruling. What was the judge's decision? The takeover can proceed without conditions, Richard J. Leon, a United States District Court judge, ruled after a six-week trial. Why was this case so closely watched? A key argument against the government's case was that the deal is a so-called vertical merger which means that the two companies do not produce competing products, one makes media content, and the other distributes it. Some big takeovers lately have had similar profiles, the purchase of the insurer Retina by the drugstore chain CVS, and Amazon's purchase of Whole Foods, and they typically make it past regulators. In the past, regulators have typically focused on keeping one company, or a small group of companies from owning too much of any one specific industry. It comes up when companies buy their competitors, what's known as horizontal integration. For example, in 2016, a federal judge blocked the merger of Staples and Office Depot after the Federal Trade Commission argued that the combination would leave Americans with only one dominant retailer focused on pens, paper clips and post-it notes. What makes the AT&T decision noteworthy is that the deal was challenged even though it doesn't share all the characteristics of horizontal integration. Vertical mergers do not fit the traditional horizontal merger analytical framework used by the U.S. regulatory authorities, R. Mark McCarhanes, a professor at the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University, wrote in an online discussion about vertical mergers. It means the Trade Commission and the Department of Justice are faced with pounding a square peg into a round hole. Read more, the Time Warner case was not AT&T's first tangle with U.S. antitrust law. Didn't this get political at one point? Yup. Time Warner owns CNN, which President Trump has publicly and repeatedly attacked as fake news. AT&T is buying Time Warner, and thus CNN, he said at a campaign rally when the deal was announced. He said it was a deal we will not approve in my administration. The government has said that Mr. Trump did not communicate with any trust officials on the deal and that their decision to oppose the merger had not been ordered by the White House. During the trial, Judge Leon rejected many of AT&T's efforts to introduce evidence about political interference into the case, 